ان الحمد لله وحده الصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري وحل الأخدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he tries to blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran يبد المجرم on that day the criminal who has committed offenses against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen, he will wish on the day of judgment that he, if he would ransom himself, he would ransom, his fa- he would ransom his family, his parents, his children, his spouse, and all the wealth he possessed in dunya, thumma yunji, so that he could, he could get emancipation. Kalla, never on earth. Innaha laza. is a blazing fire. Nazat alishawa which will skin down a person. It will burn all the skin of a person. And the hikmah, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the skin, because our, our motor cells or motor neurons are connected to the skin. That's why skin has the strongest feel. Any, punish, any punishment, physical punishment, if it is specific, it is specifically touches the skin of a person. It is so horrible to bear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, at many places in the Quran, the, the horrible thing they will, uh, they, they, they will face, Hal ataka hadith al Having to be aware of al ghashiyah the one which is going to engulf everything. And what will make you to know about the ghashiyah Wa ma adrakam. The day when many faces will be humbled and trembled. The eyes lower down. And then on that day, that the the weasel Jahim Su'irat. When the hell, when the hellfire will be, will be blazed up with the more fuel. And that it's Narullah, is a fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At allati tattalu ala al afida, which will engulf and which will cover the hearts of the people. So these verses will help a person to stay away from the prohibitions. Because the verses of adab, verses mentioning the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it helps a person to stay away from prohibitions. So the first thing, the first method, that how can we overcome our strong desires of disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to remind of the verses in the glorious, glorious Quran that warn sinners and to remind of with what has been narrated from the sayings of the Prophet and companions. And there are a number of ahadith which talk about the horrible punishment in the hellfire. When Prophet ﷺ went to Isra and Mi'raj, when he went to ascensions, when he went to ascension that is Mi'raj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him the blessings of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him the horrible punishments in the Jahannam. That's why after he returned from Mi'raj, Prophet Sallallahu was restless for the Ummah because he was knowing if they neglect the obedience of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, if they are absorbed into the worldly desires and worldly things that keep them away from the obedience of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that is too much disastrous for them. And that is, irre- that is irreparable loss which cannot be repaired, which cannot be replaced. So it is irrevocable loss. And then 
the stories of Sahaba, Ridwanullah Ta'ala, Alhim Ishmai, how the concept of Akhirah moderated their lives, how the concept of Akhirah, the name of Jannah and the punishment of Jahannam, disciplined their souls and they, they turned out to be the noble souls on the surface of the planet. So this is the first method. If, if we truly want to decondition our sinful conditioning, so in order to decondition our sinful conditioning, it is immensely important that we remind ourselves of the verses of the glorious Quran that warn the sinners and remind us of what has been narrated from the Prophet ﷺ and the companions. And then we should also focus upon the ahadith which talk about the which praise the penitents, those who repent before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the second method. And the second one is to remind with the prophets and the writers and sisters and what came to them of catastrophes because of their sins. As what happened to Adam, peace be upon him, when he disobeyed his Lord and how he suffered for his sin by being eject, ejected from paradise. Also what happened to Dawood, Sulaiman and Yusuf, alayhi musalatu wa taslim. The glorious Quran mentions these stories to be taken as admonition, since the chastisement of Allah is more painful in the hereafter, these stories should be mentioned repeatedly on the hearings of those who persist in committing sins, for they are useful in motivating causes of repentance. So the second, second one is also important because it helps a person to visualize his own position. When we read about the catastrophe, the disasters, that was inflicted upon those who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially the, the noblest of all souls, the best of all mankind, that is, Anbiya alayhim salatu wa taslim. When, Allah, when Sayyiduna, Daw, Sayyiduna Adam, peace be upon him, the father of all humanity, the father of mankind, Abu al-Bashar, father of mankind, Sayyiduna Adam, peace be upon him, Adam alayhi salam. We know very well when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded, commanded him and his wife, say the Hawa, our mother Hawa alayhi salam, Wala taqraba hadhi shajarata fatakuna min al O Adam and Eve, do not approach this specific tree, otherwise you shall be among the wrongdoers. Then there's a long story mentioned in the Quran, the gist of which is Shaitan tried his best to seduce them so that they could have the forbidden fruit, they could, they, they could have the forbidden food that was prohibited for them. And ultimately they did it. And once Sayyiduna Adam, peace be upon him, and our Hawa, our mother Hawa alayhi salam, she disobeyed this command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first punishment was, which was given to them, they were both made naked and unclothed. So clothing is a, is, is, is a, is a sign of beauty, is a, is, a, is a sign of respect. So they were, both of them were declothed. That was the first punishment. And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just took them out of the Jannah and sent them to the dunya. So this dunya, if we see actually and factually, it is just a place of punishment. Adam, peace be upon him, he was sent to this dunya and it was just as a punishment for him. Though Adam, peace be upon him, he was, he was the first messenger on the planet, the chosen, the chosen one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, when he disobeyed Allah's command and he ate the fruit, forbidden fruit, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just took him out of the paradise and sent him to this dunya. And then... He wept for almost four decades, for 40 years, one of the narration says. And for a long period of time, he, he prostrated before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking forgiveness for his sin. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ بِكَلِمَاتِ Adam, peace be upon him, received some of the words from his Lord. Then he used these words, and one of the words also mentions that he said, he and Hawa alayhi salam, both of them recited, Rabbana zulamna anfusana. O Allah, we both have wronged ourselves. 
ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا ان اف يو دونت فورغيف اس وترحمنا اند هاف ميرسي ابون اس لنكونن من الخاسرين شورلي وي شال بي امونغ ذا رونغ دورز امونغ ذا ظالمين ديرفور الله ذن الله سبحانه وتعالى اكسبت ذير توبه سو ذس ويل هيلب ا لوت when 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 we read read the stories of the prophets the sahaba the writers and pious people this will also help a person to dehabituate to decondition the sinful conditioning and then the third method is to explain to them that hasting punishment in this world is ex- expected and that every affliction which besets any servant is because of the shameful acts he has committed they are those who are unconcerned about the punishment of the hereafter while they are afraid of the punishment of allah in this world because of their ignorance the fact of a sin may be hastened in this world this is proven by the hadith of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in which he said surely a servant may be deprived of the bounty because of a sin he has committed reported by ibn majah once Fudail ibn Iyad rahimahullah said when i commit a sin i can recognize this in the behavior of my monkeys and slave servant subhanallah means the animals those who are under your subjugation under your subservience they will also turn disobedient to you and if a person is loyal to allah and all the subordinates will be loyal to you if a person is is uh, sincerely obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then of course your subordinate people will be also sincere and subservient to you we can see sayyiduna al fudail ibn iyad rahimahullah one of the prominent scholar of this ummah he said when i commit a sin i can recognize this in the behavior of my monkeys and slave servants means they turn terribly disobedient and i can feel this i can see this and abu sulaiman ad-darani rahimahullah he said dry dream is a kind of punishment and no one missed a prayer except because of a sin he has committed la ilaha illallah when a person disobeys allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deprives him of the good deeds he was supposed to perform sayyidina abu huraira radhiyallahu anhu He reported that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "When a believer commits a sin, a black spot forms on his heart. If he repents and mends his ways and seeks forgiveness, the spot is purged from his heart. But if he goes on sinning, the spot will grow until it covers his heart all over. That is rust, which Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions in His book. By no means, kalla bal rana." على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكسبون سورة المتففين وسط ما فاتين كلا by no means ران على قلوبهم but on their hearts is the stain stain of the ill which they do the hadith is reported by Imam at Tirmizi رحمه الله تعالى سيدنا حسن رحمه الله said the good deed is a light in the heart and a source of power in the body while a bad deed is da- is a darkness in the heart and a source of weakness in the body subhanallah those who observe the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala those who obey allah subhanahu wa taala in their youth allah subhanahu wa taala will protect them in their old age and sayyiduna hasan rahimahullah clearly mentions that the good deed is a light in the heart is a noor in the qalb noorun fil qalb whenever a person performs any good deed be it salah zikr charity hajj umrah or helping out others doing something for others feeling the pain of others or enjoying the good and forbidding the wrong there are a number of good deeds and in every good deed it brings noor in the, in the heart the heart is full of noor That's what Sayyidina Hassan Rahimahullah says, The good deed is a light in the heart and a source of power in the body, while a bad deed is a darkness in the heart and a source of weakness in the body. Apparently, we may see a person quite robust, 
but it is just the parent structure which is robust the ruh or the soul within it is so feeble and meek that it is just quite a miracle that it exists so the third one is uh, to explain to them that hasting punishment in this world is expected and that every affliction which besets any servant is because of the shameful act he has committed so if a person sometimes is deprived of performing any good deed he must introspect himself and this introspection is tremendously important because if a person does not introspect so how come he can fix his problems we can fix the problems only when we are exposed to one another so hasan sayyiduna hasan rahimahullah he said the good deed is a noor in the heart and a source of power in the body and a bad deed is a darkness in the heart and a source of weakness in the body and the fourth method is to tell the people about the punishment of major sins such as intoxication adultery or fornication murder pride envy and backbiting what is important here is that the learned people should be like a skillful physician who can diagnose the disease successfully so that he can treat it it was reported that a, that a man said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ausini advise me the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam do not become angry and furious la taghdab faraddada miraran the hadith says which is reported by imam al-bukhari rahimahullah he kept on repeating he repeatedly asked this question ausini you give me nasiha prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam la taghdab do not be angry and every time he asked thumma after this prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam la taghdab after this prophet la taghdab and then another man said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advise me prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam you should be despondent of what is in the hands of people and this this is actually a long hadith a man came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam dullani ala amalin idha amiltuhu ahabbani ahabbani allah wa ahabbani an-nas o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you advise me of a deed when i practice it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves will love me and the people also love me so he wanted to be loved by allah and to be loved by the people so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam izhad bima izhad fi dunya yuhibbuk allah you renounce the world you practice the zuhud in dunya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you izhad fi dunya renounce the world yuhibbuk allah allah will allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start loving you was had bima fi aydin nas and be indifferent to what people possess and don't be concerned what people possess or simply don't think about what people possess you hibba kan nas they will start loving you therefore we can see that question was one ausini give me nasiha but there, there is a long array of answers which means that prophet sallallahu taala sallam always he 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 took strong note of what people require and he would give the nasiha he would give the treatment according to the nature of the nature of the disease prophet sallallahu taala sallam if it, if he would feel that the person lacks the the, the, the sobriety and patience he is a short tempered person so prophet sallallahu taala advised him advised him not to lose his temper not not to be short tempered another person he also asked for the same thing he also asked for the nasiha so prophet sallallahu taala sallam gave the nasiha according to his requirement so what has been mentioned is the treatment of heedlessness so these are the methods that how can we overcome this heedlessness and then we also discuss here the treatment of sensual desire in effect the way of its treatment may be taken from what we have remarked in the chapter of exercising the soul undoubtedly patience is of paramount importance for the treatment of sensual desire 
To exemplify this, one's desire may prolong because of having some time, something harm to his disease. Indeed, he is motivated to, to take these harmful matters by his ardent desire or his heedlessness. Therefore, one should feel the bitterness of patience. Also, this way can be used to treat desire with regard to committing sins. For example, if one is overtaken by his desire and consequently cannot keep his eye hot and his extremities away from seeking out vain desires, he should remind himself of the threatening statements of Allah's punishment that are mentioned in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subsequently, if his fear increases, he will keep himself, himself away from the causes that agitate his desire. Say, for example, if a person feels that he has the disease is, say, for example, avarice, or a person is too much greedy, so he should avoid the company of the greedy people. He should avoid the company of the tremendously rich. He should avoid the company of those who always talk about dunya. Because this, this is going to increase his desire. This won't subjugate his desire. That's why he needs to keep himself away from the causes which can potentially cause for this disease. As I said before, as we mentioned before, unless and until a person does not know the causes, it is very difficult for him to cure the disease. Because once the causes are known, it is easy to, it is easy to diagnose the disease. Once it is diagnosed because by, by virtue of causes, because of the causes, then it is easy to prescribe the medicine, focusing upon the cause and its notification that what agitates desire Ext externally, externally is the presence of the desired and looking at him. Likewise, if a person is having the disease of arrogance, kibar, and if, if he doesn't avoid the the sessions and the sitting with the arrogant people, he cannot, it is very difficult for him to cure this disease. And for this, he needs to stay with the humble people who's, who are known for their humility and humbleness for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the souls, they always copy other souls. It's the inherent feature of the soul that it copy, it is surrounding those who are around it. Therefore, if a person is having arrogance, so how can he overcome this arrogance? The, he he, he needs to stay with the humble people. And he needs to, he need to go through the stories of the arrogance. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stern, sternly and very brutally dealt with them. And they were destroyed forever and ever. Therefore, the first thing for the treatment of this disease is attending remembrance meeting and listening with a conscious heart. If a person is, for example, having the disease of listening to music, it's also one of the deadly diseases. If a person listens to music, music is unanimously prohibited thing. One must try his or her top level best to stay away from the music. And specifically nowadays when it is at, 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 the, at the fingertips, so one has to stay away, one has to be very cautious about it. Otherwise, he is altogether destroyed. And in the replacement to music, one should listen to the nasheed, naat, in which Prophet ﷺ is being praised, or the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. And then one should ponder over what have been said and consequently fear will be produced. Whereupon, patients and causes of seeking treatment will be easy and available, and all of these are due to Allah Almighty's help and support. If it is asked, why does a man commit sins even though he knows their shameful consequences? It's a very important question. So we know that if I commit a sin, yes, I have to face the horrible implications of this sin, horrible consequences. If I do a good deed, I will have, I will have a lot of reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Despite having the knowledge of it, then why does a man commit sins? Even though he knows their shameful consequences. And there are many answers to this question according to Imam, Imam Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah. 
The first one, the promised punishment is not existent at present. All the Quranic verses and the prophetic tradition, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it doesn't mention. Uh, it, it, it mentioned about the punishment uh, of akhirah, which is not, we can say, tangible, which, which, which we can see and feel right now. So the promised punishment is not existent at present. It, it is something connected to the future. And what is connected to the future seems to be too far. But there is a proverb in Arabic, Ala kullu ma huwa atin qareeb. Don't worry about future, it comes soon enough. It has to come, it is bound to come. And second important thing, if the believer committed a sin, he should be determined to repent as he is promised that repentance pardons what is previously done. But the hope in long life in the dom is the dominant characteristic of human beings. So he continued to deliver repentance. And when repentance became something hopeful, he engaged in sins. So this is another important thing to be taken care of. That is... Uh, whenever a believer commits a sin, then it must be followed by repentance, by a good deed. As Prophet ﷺ commanded Sayyidina Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, وَأَتْبِ سَيَّةَ الْحَسَنَةِ O Mu'az, first of all, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And وَأَتْبِ سَيَّةَ الْحَسَنَةِ Whenever you commit any sin, it must be followed by a good deed. تَمْهُوهَا The impact of the good deed is that it will erase and efface the impact of the bad deed. And Shaitan will try his best, as he said before, tasweef, delaying the tawbah. So this is another important thing that, that makes a person to commit a sin, despite knowing the fact that sin is deadly and disastrous for him. Then the third reason is man always inspires hope in Allah's forgiveness. That is what we call as wishful thinking. Though we have discussed before the difference between Hope and wishful thinking. Hope is which is wajib upon us. And opposite to hope is wishful thinking. And what this wishful thinking is? That a person always thinks Allah is Gafur Rahim, but he never tries to avoid the prohibitions. He never tries to practice the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avoiding the obligations, practicing the prohibitions, and then saying Allah is Gafur Rahim. But at the same time, he does not make any effort for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does not make any effort in order to control the vain desires of nafs. He never tries to tame his nafs. Therefore, uh, shaitan can easily victimize him. And victimiz victimization of such, of, of such a person is through when fishful thinking becomes his bread and butter. So these are some of the reasons that, that make a person uh, to just overlook uh, the sins. And in order to treat all these diseases, man should be mindful that every coming is nearer. As I said, don't worry about future, it comes soon enough. Allah kullu ma huwa atin qareeb. And he's not sure when this may attack him. Moreover, reminding one another that most of the torture of people in hell is because of its delay, and this and this can be, and this can be, uh, this can help the implementation of repentance. The one who delays builds the matter up on his existence, which is not actually the case. For he may die, and even if he lives for some time, he may be unable to relinquish sins as he is today. He also should remember should be remembered that the reason for his inability to avoid sin lurks behind the dominance of his desires and will accompany him thereafter. This matter is assured by habit. For this, those who delay have perished because they thought that there is a difference between the two cases. So what is required? That a person should, should not be in a state of heedlessness and negligence. The similitude of the one who delays is, the, is like that of the one who wants to uproot a tree but finds that it is very strong and only will be uprooted with difficulty. Thereupon, he said, I will delay its uprooting for one year, then I will come to uproot it. But he does not know that longer the tree lives, the more firmly rooted it will be. 
and that the more elderly he is, the more feeble he will be. What a wonder that he is unable to attack it, even though he uses his full strength. While it is very weak, how does he expect to overcome it if he grows faint while it grows strong? This is a beautiful example given by Imam Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala that <laughs> delaying the tawbah is actually strengthening, strengthening the nafs. And the example is that of the tree. If the tree is sapling is young, it is easy to uproot it. But once you delay it, and the sapling is now turned into a tree which firms up its roots into the soil and every passing year strengthens its roots in the soil so it is very difficult to uproot it right now same is the case of the nafs when shaitan tells us okay you delay you, you, you make tawbah next month next year actually this only strengthens the nafs it won't make it feeble and meek so that we could subdue it. Therefore, the intelligent people are those who subdue the nafs. They don't give it ample time to be strengthened. And then, as for awaiting Allah's forgiveness, it is possible that the sinner may be forgiven, but the man should be serious. The likeness of this man is the one who spent all his property impoverished himself and his children and awaited Allah to guide him to a treasure in a ruin. This can be materialized, but this person is a foolish and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. So finally we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our tawbah. Firstly to grant us the tawfiq, facilitate the tawbah for us and make us aware of our sins. Make us aware of, of the disaster nature of the sins and the disastrous and the horrible implication and consequences of the sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill up our heart with the Iman, to light up our hearts with the nur of Iman, with the light of Iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with Tawbah Nasuha, with the sincere Tawbah after which there is no disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك الله وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك سبحان ربك ورب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته